Hello Survivors, Katie here, Project Lead on The Long Dark. Today I am really excited to share with you what The Long Dark team has added into Part 2 of Tales from the Far Territory, the paid expansion pass for The Long Dark. Part 2 is called Signal Void, and here is what you can expect to find added to the paid stream of Part 2, and for free in the base game in the March update to Survival Mode. Part 2 of the expansion pass is centred around the new Transponder gameplay, and introduces the first tale, Signal Void. We created tales to give our survival mode players more reasons to explore and more objectives to follow, while weaving in some compelling narrative elements. Signal Void begins with the discovery of the handheld shortwave receiver found in the Forsaken airfield. Alongside the shortwave, you'll find an old note with details on Lower Great Bear's transmitter network. The network is in a sorry state, but when it last worked, it picked up some unusual signals. From this point on, it's up to you to head into the Far Territory and decide which transmitters to repair, so you can continue the tale and find out more about these mysterious transmissions. We've added a new page to the journal, so you can track your progress through the tale, making it easy to put down and pick up the tale at your own pace, while you continue your survival journey in the long dark. As you track down the origin of these mysterious signals, you will discover a number of new and unique bunkers, and begin to uncover their dark secrets. What mysteries does the Far Territory hold? and what will the future tales reveal? Note that the tale is not available in Interloper, as we felt that the constraint that make that experience enjoyable work against the goals of the tale. Another new feature of Tales Part 2 are the new transmitter sites, which allow the handheld shortwave to pick up signals. Keeping them in good repair will help you get the most out of your journey. The tale will give you a rough idea where to locate a number of these transmitter sites, and once encountering them, you'll see that there are a number of worn-out elements that need replacing. Some of these items will be familiar ones you've encountered before, such as the car battery or the scrap metal, and a couple are new to survival mode, like the fuses and wires. Once all the repaired items are collected and the transmitter is turned on, you'll then just need to wait for the aurora or electrostatic fog weather to roll around. Now you're ready to start using the handheld shortwave and home in on any signals that are within range of your position. You can keep track of which transmitters you've found or repaired through the new page in the Collections section of the journal. This page, along with listing the transmitter sites, also spells out the regions that that transmitter site has influence over, so you know which region you can start searching for either the tail bunker or the hidden supply caches. As you start to use the handheld shortwave, one of the first things you'll notice is that it has two channels. One is for tracking the mysterious signals related to the tail, while the other is for tracking signals from a new kind of hidden supply cache or from the site of an unfamiliar downed aircraft. All of the main regions have a number of hidden supply caches, so if you're in an area where you've already repaired the transmitter and an aurora starts up, then that is your opportunity to equip the handheld shortwave and go and see what you can find. Before you set out, you should take note of two important aspects on the handheld shortwave, the blinking light on the side and the dial on its face. Use the dial to align yourself in the direction of the strongest signal. The light on the side will help guide you by blinking faster the closer you get to the signal. There's also audio effects that increase in frequency as you get close to the signal origin. If your handheld shortwave happens to be in your inventory drawing an aurora, you'll hear an indication or see a caption when you come into range of a signal to investigate. So if you're paying attention, you'll know when it's time to equip the handheld shortwave. We have a number of new gear items available in the expansion pass. You'll be able to discover four new clothing items, a durable leather flight jacket, a matching aviator's hat, both of which fit neatly into the airfield, and also a hockey jersey because Canada? These three items can be found anywhere on Great Bear Island, in a variety of locations or containers. The fourth clothing item is a technical balaclava, which is very rare and can only be found while using the handheld shortwave or as part of the tail. There are also a couple of new food items that you'll only be able to find in the bunkers relating to the tail or in some of the trackable supply caches. In the final tail location, you will also be able to locate the rifle holster a unique item that offers a significant weight reduction to your rifle when equipped in an accessory slot. Along with part 2 of Tales, we're also releasing a free March update to survival mode. First up, we've made some exciting updates to beachcombing. While it still retains its basic behaviour, if you head to the shorelines after a blizzard, you might find some different items have spawned, things that'll only wash up after storms. Maybe even a boat if you're lucky. It won't help you leave the island, but it might contain some valuable loot. As you explore Great Bear, you will also notice that there are now oak trees in many locations. Search beneath the tree to collect acorns from under the snow. And with a bit of prep work, you can either eat them for some extra calories, a nice alternative for cattails for our interloper players, or grind them up and brew yourself some nice warming acorn coffee. 
which we promise tastes better than it sounds. Fire-hardened arrows are a new item you can craft at any fire, assuming you have the required resources. And they are an easy to craft alternative to our regular arrows. Bear in mind that while they're effective for small game like rabbits, they won't damage larger creatures, though they might help you scare off a wolf. Some of our eagle-eyed players will have noticed that the prepper cache has disappeared in our December update. Well, they're now back in play, and they have undergone some significant updates. Firstly, they are now spread across nine regions of the game, and although you might be able to find a hatch, you won't know until you enter it if it's going to be empty or fully stocked. There will only be three fully stocked prepper caches in each game, which vary in location from each new game you play. It might go without saying, but the prepper cache hatches are inappropriately hard to find locations, and they can now also be found in Interloper. If you are lucky enough to find one of the fully stocked prepper caches, then you'll also be able to enjoy the visual update we've given them. Each one has a unique personality, and the loot you'll find reflects that too. We hope you have fun seeking them out. Well, that covers everything we added for both the paid expansion and the free base game for Tales from the Far Territory Part 2, Signal Void. We hope you enjoy exploring the new features and additions, and we look forward to reading your comments and feedback. For a helpful FAQ on the expansion, or to review a roadmap of what's to come, please visit thelongdark.com forward slash expansion. Thanks for watching, survivors, and good luck exploring the Far Territory. See you next time.